Good day everyone, my name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the Ogenesis. We'll be looking at the Ogenesis. Ogenesis is defined as the process of formation and maturation of the ovum in the female. So, Ogenesis takes place in the ovary and this is the diagram of the ovary and as you can see here the ovary has the outer cortex and the inner medulla so in the outer cortex you see large rounded ogonium or ogonia cells or ogonia large rounded cells which is known as ogonia so the ogonia now is the progenitor for ovum that is to say that the ova or the ovum developed from the ogonia that is found in the outer cortex of the ovary and all the ogonia that are in the female we are developed at the fertile life they were all developed at the fertile life and they do not multiply thereafter even after birth they do not multiply so Coming to the process of maturation of this ogonium now into the ovum. The ogonium, as you can see here, which was developed during fertile life, at birth, at birth the ogonium enlarges. And as it enlarges, it forms the primary oocyte. It enlarges to become the primary oocyte. Now, the primary oocyte undergo the first meiotic division, but it did not complete it. The first meiotic division of the primary oocyte was arrested at the prophase stage. It was arrested at the prophase stage, so it did not complete it. Now, fast forward to puberty. The fertile age of the ladies or the female is from 12 years to 50 years though there may be some variation now remember that the primary oocyte did not complete the first meiotic division it was arrested at prophase stage so at puberty what happens at puberty is that the primary oocyte when the female is at puberty stage now completes the first meiotic division to give rise to the secondary oocyte and also the first polar body. What it gave rise here are two unequal daughter cells. You can see that the secondary oocyte is large, while the first polar body is small, as you can see here. So, and this happened at puberty. That is when the primary oocyte completes its first meiotic division to give rise to the secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Now, the secondary oocytes also undergo the second meiotic division here. And as it undergoes the second meiotic division, it is arrested at the metaphase state. That is where it is arrested. It did not complete the second meiotic division. Now, it can only complete the second meiotic division if fertilization occur. If fertilization occur, it gives rise to the ovum and the second polar body. But if fertilization does not occur, it stops at the secondary oocyte and it degenerates. So that is the process of the maturation of the uh, ogonium into the ovum. So now the primary oocyte that are produced in the body of the female at birth is around 48,000. But throughout the fetal age of the female, about 400 of these uh, uh, primary oocytes will be utilized at puberty. Only 5 to 30 each menstrual cycle or each cycle of the female. Only 5 to 30 of these uh, primary oocytes undergo maturation. And as they undergo maturation, only one become fully mature others degenerate so that is it 
then we will be looking at the formation of the ovarian follicle. So let's look at the formation of the ovarian follicles. We've seen that the ova develop from the ogonia that lie in the cortex of the ovary. So the ogonia that lie in the cortex of the ovary is what gives rise to the ovum. And these ogonia are surrounded by some stroma cells. So we are going to look at how these stroma cells give rise to the ovarian follicle or graphene follicle. So look at the stroma cells. These are the stroma cells surrounding the oocyte. Now the cells of the stroma become flattened and they become flattened to surround the oocyte and at that stage it forms the follicular cells. So as they become flattened around the oocyte, they are called the follicular cells. Now the follicular cells here become columnar in shape. So you can notice the difference between these flattened cells and this shape here. They become columnar in shape. And at this stage that they become columnar in shape, they are called the primordial follicle. And you notice that the zona pellucida come to lie between the oocyte and the and the primordial follicle. So you can see the zona pellucida here surrounding the oocyte. It lies between the oocyte and the primordial follicle. And the zona pellucida prevents the ovum or the oocyte from getting fertilized. So it surrounds it to prevent it. So the follicular cells proliferate. They begin to enlarge and they increase in size and they form several layers. So these are the follicular cells. They form different layers, several layers as they enlarge. So and they, at this stage, they are called the granulosa cells. The follicular cells that proliferate and form different layers are called the granulosa cells or the membrana granulosa. So you can see the zona pellucida here. Then coming to this stage now, the granulosa cells begin to shift apart because a cavity begins to form within the, the granulosa cells, shifting the granulosa cells apart. And this cavity grew that it became so wide. And this cavity is known as the follicular cavity. So this is the follicular cavity. And the follicular cavity contains the follicular fluid. So you can see how the follicular cavity came to shift the granulosa cells apart. Then the granulosa cells that come to lie on, the, on top of the oocyte here becomes the cumulus ophoricus. They become the cumulus ophoricus or the cumulus ovaricus. Then the granulosa cells that come to lie under the oocyte, immediately under the oocyte, become the discus prorigerus. And you can see here that the oocyte come to lie in an eccentric manner. You can see how the oocyte lie in an eccentric manner. So coming over here now, the cells of the stroma, some cells of the stroma become uh, condensed and surround the granulosa cells to form the theca interna. So the cells of the stroma become condensed and surround the granulosa cells to form the theca interna. Then the, some fibrous cells become condensed also and surround the theca interna to form the theca externa. So this is how an ovum appear. So let's see ovulation. This ovum that is mature like this now, how do they leave the ovary where they are formed or where they undergo maturation? How do they leave there to come and lie where they are fertilized? So that is ovulation. 
So we'll be looking at ovulation. Now, ovulation is defined as the process of shedding the already matured ovum in the ovary. The process of shedding it off, uh, the ovary releasing it from the ovary into the into the uterine tube where it awaits fertilization. So, ovulation happens at the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. If, assuming we are using the 28 day cycle, day, it happens at the 14th day. So, looking at here, this is the ovary and this is the ovarian follicle covering the ovum. So, you can see that here now, the ovarian follicle begins to enlarge. It begins to enlarge and it approaches the wall of the ovary. So you can see how it is enlarging and it keeps approaching the wall of the ovary. And also you can see the ovum inside the ovarian follicle. So as it keeps enlarging and uh, keeps pressing the wall of the, the ovary, you notice that uh, it enlarges to a certain limit that it ruptures. And immediately it ruptures, the wall of the ovary also uh, ruptures. And when this happens, the ovum that lies inside the ovarian follicle finds its way out of the out of the ovary. So look at what happened here. And because the ovary lies immediately directly to the complicated part of the uterine tube, you can see immediately it ruptures and uh, it finds its way out. It gets trapped in this fimbricated part of the uterine tube. And once it gets trapped here, it finds its way into the uterine tube. So these factors play part in, in causing the rupture of the ovarian follicle, utilizing hormone. The level of utilizing hormone in the blood during ovulation increases, and as it increases, it causes the increase in activity of this enzyme known as collagenase. It causes the increase in this activity, and as it causes the increase in the activity of this enzyme, this enzyme in turn causes uh, the digestion, or this enzyme digests collagen fibers that surrounds the over uh, the ovarian follicle it digests it so once this collagen fiber gives way it becomes easy for the ovarian follicle to rupture then another thing is the prostate gladens the prostate gladen causes the contraction of smooth muscles around the ovary so this contraction also plays part in causes the rupture of the of the ovarian follicle and also the follicular fluid increase in the follicular fluid increase in the follicular fluid pressure also plays a part but the main factor that plays the major role there is this digestion of the collagenase that is the main factor that contributes majorly in this so what happened to this ovum that is released into the uterine tube? What happens is that it takes three to four days for the ovum to find its way into the ampulla. The ampulla is the part of the uterine tube where fertilization occurs. So it begins to travel and with the help of cilia that are found in the wall of the uterine tube, cilia helps in the movement of the ovum down to the ampulla part. And this movement takes three to four days. If, if fertilization happens, that is if the female has intercourse and a sperm fertilizes the ovum. Now, you notice that the ovum will leave the ampulla part of the uterine tube and finds its way to the uterus where it gets implants. And that is it. But if uh, fertilization does not occur, the ovum degenerates after 24 hours and as it degenerates, it is passed through the vaginal canal. So that is what happened in the fate of the ovum. If fertilization occurs, it proceeds to pregnancy. If fertilization does not occur, 
it, it, it degenerates after 24 hours and it is pushed out. So let's see the copies written. What happened to this follicle? This rough short follicle now, what happened to it? So that is what we'll be looking at. So let's see the corpus lithium. I've told us that corpus lithium is formed from the rough short uh, ovarian follicle. So you can see the rough short ovarian follicle here. Now this ovarian follicle become rounded and then the cells begin to increase. The cells, the follicular cells begin to increase and it becomes rounded. Now you can notice that at this stage it is folded. While here it is rounded and the cells begin to, to increase, to enlarge. They, in, they begin to enlarge. So you can see the cells as they, they enlarge. Now, at this stage now, the cells within, within the rounded ovarian follicle has enlarged and they attain a polyhedral shape. So you can see the polyhedral shape of these enlarged cells. Now, the cytoplasm of these uh, polyhedral cells become filled with uh, yellow pigments. And because it is filled with yellow pigment, that is where the name corpus lithium came from. Corpus lithium means a yellow pigment or a yellow cell. That is where the name came from. And at this stage now, they are called the lithium cells. Now, what happened to the corpus lithium? You know that the corpus lithium secretes progesterone. So, if pregnancy does not occur, the corpus lithium secretes progesterone for like 14 days and it generates and it is, it generates and uh, into a mass of fibrous uh, tissue known as corpus albicans. And together it is passed through the menstrual flow. But if pregnancy occurs, the corpus lithium persists for about three to four months. And once it persists, it continues to secrete progesterone into the bloodstream. That is, it secretes progesterone that is required for pregnancy into the bloodstream. You can see the blood vessel here that is directly attached to it. And for these few months that the corpus lithium persisted, it is the HCG that causes the persistence of the corpus lithium. Now, at the fourth month after the uh, placenta has been fully formed, the corpus lithium now degenerates and the placenta continue to secrete the progesterone. So that is what happened to the uh, corpus lithium. So we've come to the end of this teaching. We've been able to see the formation and maturation of the ogonia into the ovum. We've been able to see ovulation. We were able to see the uh, formation of the ovarian follicle. We saw the fate of the ovum and finally the corpus lithium. So I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisholm Great. Please share this video, like this video and comment on this video. Thank you very much.